Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. The Progressives Governors Forum held a meeting on Sunday, and that's to discuss matters arising regarding the All Progressives Congress and the legality of the May Malabuni-led care Caretaker Committee in the All Progressives Congress. Now, this issue has generated lots of controversy in recent time, and that's because of that Supreme Court judgment that seemed to just tip the scales. And we've invited a lawyer, Mr. Abayomi Alagbada, to shed more light on this. Good morning, Mr. Alagbada. Thank you very much for having me. So this particular issue remains a highly controversial one. And when that Progressives Governors Forum met on Sunday, the results of the discussion was that they were going to wait for the president, who's currently in the UK, to come back before they make any decision. Yeah. But before the president returns, talking about this matter, um, I want us to consider the legality of Boni being the chairman of the APC caretaker committee. Because I um, remember quoting um, the APC constitution as well as the constitution of Nigeria um, to APC members who seem to debate that issue um, about the legality of Boni's chairmanship. It's article 17 of the APC constitution, which says that no officer in any organ of the party shall hold any executive position in government. And uh, Section 1A3 of the Nigerian Constitution also went on to say that a governor shall not, within the period where he holds office, go ahead to hold any other executive position. But it seemed that the challenge here was to, uh, to determine if the position of a chairman caretaker committee is an executive position. Is there a way for you to help us unbundle that and to determine if Boni should, in fact, under the law, be a chairman of that caretaker committee as a sitting governor? Well, th thank you for having me, I mean, I think the proper um, way to start is to look at um, the decision of the Supreme Court, which uh, was seem to have um, um, made a Open big... the kind of worms. Yes, yes. Um, the law as I know it is that the majority decision of the Supreme Court, or a court, for instance, in, in the Court of Appeal, you have three justices. If two decides on a position and one dissents, it is the majority that is the decision. Mm -hmm. Now, in this case, you had a, a seven-man panel, and then you have the position of the four. Now, people are discussing the minority position. The position, as we have it today, the law, as it relates to Akiri Dulu and Jegede today, is the position of the four-man panel. Sorry, the four men in the majority side. And that decision is very simple. They are saying that Akiri Dulu was properly presented as the representative of the APC, Buni, who is, I agree, a sitting governor, has not done anything in contradiction to what the provisions of Section 182 of the Constitution or 183 of the Constitution says. Now, look at a Governor Fayemi. Governor Fayemi is a sitting governor in Ekiti State. Governor Fayemi is the leader or is the, gov is the um, chairman of the Governor's Forum in Nigeria today. If Fayemi can hold those two positions together, what makes Buni different from well, Fayemi? Well, um, now, I'm, I'm coming somewhere. Okay. I'm coming somewhere. The reason I'm saying this is, this is a caretaker committee. It, it's doing that in an acti acting capacity. Now, look at your family, for instance. Let's zero in on the family. You have your family routine on a daily basis. That, that's a particular way you do your thing. And then all of a sudden, you decide to change in a different direction. Can a stranger to your family question what you have done? That is the argument for me. Because for me, this is an arrangement within the APC. There is a situation on the ground. The former chairman had to leave. And you know, even nature itself does not allow for vacuum. Somebody has to step in, even if it is an acting capital. This is what Boone, Boone is not receiving payment. I think the, the extension of that Section 183 is that, is Buni being remunerated for what he's doing? The answer is no. But we, but we do not know that. that the answer say. is no. I can tell you from where I sit. Now, you see, internal decisions of a political party remains their problem. A member of that party can challenge it because he's a member of the party. When a total stranger, and then don't forget, this is, we're looking at a, a, an election petition. Election petition is very narrow. Very, very narrow. All you are looking for is what the election conducted, the parties who cont uh, contested the election, were they properly presented, and did the party declare, who, who was declared winner properly declared. But Those are the we, issues. But when we look at the judgment, do you realize that one of the issues, you know, that, that is raised is the fact that 
Jengene failed to join Buni in that suit? No, Jengene could not have even joined Buni. Buni is a sitting governor. He has immunity. But the reason why I mention that is that when you look at the facts of Akeo Delu's um, candidature of yes. the All Progressives Congress, it was May Malabuni that actually signed his nomination form. So of that's course. why the, AP, the, the PDP is saying that's, that's something they should have done. Join Buni as, you know, uh, one of the, the, you know, in the suit. But it's just that these four-man panel, or rather the four to three judgment said that, well, the APC was joined, so um, that really covers Buni. Section, I, I think it's um, Clause 17A of the Supplementary Regulation and Guidelines for the Conduct of Election. It's a regulation by the INEC says that only the national chairman of a party and the national secretary can submit names of their um, candidates. contestants or yeah. candidates. Now, that is a regulation. But if you read section 138.1 or 2 of the um, Electoral Act as amended 2010, it says that regulations, even though they are, they are not uh, abided by, even though they are contradicted against, cannot on their own invalidate an election. See, these are, these are legal issues that have already been taken care of by the relevant laws. Now, if um, Jegede has a problem with the election, that problem has to be within the confines of that election, not the process of APC. I, I think we should be focused on what we are arguing here. The process within which APC operated is their problem. Yeah, well, so so the the challenge, um, you know, and I think the reason this is coming up is yes, Akira Dolu's case uh, brought it to limelight and you know raised yes. these questions, you know, yes. but the, the 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 ideas, you know, and the, the conversation started to be um, of um, because of future elections, yes, twenty twenty year elections uh, should be Buni's presence as chairman of that uh, committee um, be, you know, should it remain that way? So that they don't continue with these legal battles, you know. Because that, that is the whole essence um, of these governors coming together. Yeah, you know, to, um, to address the issue. The the main thing, you know, like you said, is that he's not receiving salary. You know, he's the head of the no. head of the committee and is not, you know, yes. under you know any pay, um, which I, I believe we'll still have to look deeper into. Mm. Um, but now they have mentioned that they're waiting for President Mohamedou Buhari to, of course, uh, give a decision concerning this. Um, why do you think that is? Um, if the law already states what exactly is right and what is wrong, do we still need to wait for the president? It goes back to what I said earlier. I said this is a family issue. Look at your own family. You have your wife, you have your children. You direct the affairs of your family in the manner you deem fit. Now, a total stranger cannot come in and tell you this is what you do. Well, inc inc now, including now, Fesso Skayamo in this um, well, well I, I don't want to go into Professor Skoyamo's position. We would position. raise it because it's, the, the, it's the issue for me, the issue for me is that the president yeah. is the leader of the APC. Decisions that has to do with the APC, of course, the, the leader has to know about it. So, if they are saying they are waiting for the president, they are only saying our leader has to be on ground. Let's address it as a family issue. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I am sure that if Kiyamu sits down with the leaders of the party and the president, there will be an arrangement that will be put in place to checkmate all of this in the future. That is what I think. But I don't, I don't see why this argument is stretching in the manner it's stretching. Because these are, these are issues that generally can be dealt with within the APC. But it's an internal how issue. How do you respond to Festus Skiyama's statement that the Supreme Court judgment has just weaponized those who might be aggrieved by the APC to go ahead and challenge uh, you know, any congresses that might be conducted in the future? I don't know who would do that because, you see, the position that most people are taking is the minority position. It's not even the law. It's not the law. The decision of the majority is the law. So if my Lord uh, Ejembe Eko has gone to town to incorporate principles of, um, principles of uh, employment, because my Lord said, because APC is represented, then Buni doesn't have to be sued. The principle of vicarious liability applies with the greatest respect to my Lord. I don't agree. This is election petition we are talking about. It's very narrow. You cannot incorporate all of those principles into this position. I don't agree. So my position remains that the position anybody should take in respect of this matter is the mi majority position, not the minority. That is the law. You see, dissenting views are for future. The Supreme Court can come tomorrow and say, oh, we are, re we are reversing ourselves. We want to take a look at the dissenting position. 
That is the Supreme yeah, Court. But, but, but it, isn't that a huge enough risk to consider? You know, if the Supreme Court you know, uh, takes that decision back. Because the question yeah. you ask me is how many times has the Supreme Court? Yeah, well, you know, if, if, there is, if there is that possibility at all, isn't that too much of a risk to take um, going into elections? You see, like I said earlier, the political environment as we have it today is already charged. People on the other side of the APC are looking for weaknesses to hold on to. The court is supposed to be a neutral body. Look at the law as it is. State the law as they are and move forward. Now, there is no reason why judges should not dissent. Of course, if you, if you disagree with your learned brother, you, you dissent. But you see, in dissenting, we have to be very careful. What I have seen in the minority position of that court is not something that should have come up. What do you At expect all. when the president returns? Well, I expect that they will tidy up things. They have started taking steps. They've started taking steps. The governors are meeting. I'm sure this issue will be addressed. See, nature abhors vacuum. Bruni has to come in because they are substantive chairman are to leave. What, they, what they, the mistake here for me was that, oh, maybe they, some people did not sit down properly to think, oh, this man is a sitting governor. That may be an issue. But again, who is perfect? Things happen every day, even in our individual lives. We take decisions sometimes that we'll have to look at again and review. So let's not, let's not over-label or belabor this issue. So just finally, right, um, there's, you know, the contrary opinion about yes. the morality. If, if we've done our checks and balances and says, and say, okay, maybe the law says it's legal, you know, regarding bonus chairmanship, but when we look at the moral angle, and analysts say it is politically suicidal for the APC to allow Buni to continue to be chairman of the caretaker committee. With all this controversy, would you advise that Buni steps down? No, but, but Buni doesn't have to step down. The party should take a decision. Or should the party go ahead and constitute a national working committee? Of course, but, but, but the party will do that. I think that so that's, do you think that's, that's the direction that's, that's they are the taking. End. That will be the solution to this, to this crisis? In my mind, yes. Because, you see... Most of the people are agitating against this structure, this present structure. Are people just looking out for weaknesses to bring down the APC and particularly to attack the person of the president? You don't have to agree with the president on every issue. He's the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as today. Things happen every day. Our responsibilities as citizens is to ensure that things work in Nigeria. So leave individual party problems for the party. Even the PDP is having their own issues. Are they not resolving it one way or the other? So why, why are we making the APC issue a national discourse? It's a political party anyway. They will make mistakes and they will reconvene to correct themselves. Let us stick to the law. The law is that Akere Dolu was properly elected as governor. Let nobody bring in extraneous arguments to till the law. Okay, yeah, so let's wow. wait and see how that uh, National Working Committee will be constituted. Remember the whole crisis that occurred in 2020 regarding that to the NWC and its uh, dissolution. Well, Mr. Abayomi Alagbada, lawyer, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us on this issue. I'm grateful. Thank you for having me. All right, and that's where we will be wrapping up our discussions this morning on The Breakfast. So if you want to catch up, remember to uh, you know, go to our social media platforms. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> And uh, same with our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osao Gie Ogbawa. And I am Aneta Felix. Bye-bye.